Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Hi, Michelle. I'm doing great. How's everything going with you? Everything's good. You know what? I'm I am really excited for today's episode. <laughs> oh, me too. I can't wait. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one, guys. We are talking all about Seinfeld today. So, we've yeah. talked on the show before. We, we something from Seinfeld always comes up, right, Lindsay? It's just such a good uh, the show in general is such a good observation on culture. So that's why. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so uh, the, and there's so many um references that have seeped into just regular conversations even if you yeah. don't watch Seinfeld you probably are using something from Seinfeld you might not even realize <laughs> totally that's why I'm so excited to bring this to our listeners you know I think a lot of our listeners know friends yeah but I think a lot of them might be missing out on Seinfeld which I think is funnier than friends <laughs> that's yeah. a hot take maybe in front of it, you it is. No, no, no. I, I, uh, okay. This is my take as if, as, as those being my, like two of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows. I always say that friends is my macaroni and cheese of TV shows. Like it's my comfort yeah. show. It's, yeah. I feel, you know, really good. Um, but I do think that Seinfeld is actually funnier. Oh, for sure. Uh, it's better writing. Anyway, yeah. it's, it's just better. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, it is. Uh, but I love uh, but like I uh, friends like warms my heart more. But yes. Seinfeld yes. isn't meant to warm your heart. And no. but it's still yeah. I still watch Seinfeld. I watch Seinfeld all the time. And sometimes like I remember when I had, you know, my my babies were little, little babies and I was waking up in the night with them. Oh. I would turn on a Seinfeld. Sometimes if I couldn't sleep, I would, you know, watch a Seinfeld yeah, episode. Sure. Sometimes yeah. if things are a little too intense in the news, Dan will say, like, let's just watch Seinfeld. Like, it just mm -hmm. is. And I've yeah. seen it, even if I've seen it a million times, I've seen yeah. it so many times. I still laugh. It's just oh, that good. that's so true. It's just that good. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld was is a comedian, right? So and did he do the writing of the show too? I yeah, guess so. Jerry Seinfeld yeah. and Larry mm -hmm. David and others. Uh, I think that, that's right. They're, yes. they're just. Uh, Okay. <laughs> they're so, so great yeah. so but guys so if you haven't watched Seinfeld you definitely uh should give it a try um so before we get into it uh we want to we want to let you know that if you are listening over Spotify we have a great way that we've been interacting with our listeners that I absolutely love we've been doing a key poll mm -hmm. um and we get your responses. So if you're listening on Spotify, you can contribute to the poll. And then we let you know the results of the poll uh, in a future episode. So yeah, that's a like, lot of fun. <clears throat> I feel like through these polls, little by little, we're getting to know our audience. You know, what are you guys? What are your yeah. habits? What are your opinions? And so it's more of a conversation. And we are all about conversation yeah. back and forth between you guys. So that's the whole thing. Guys. That's the whole <laughs> thing, Michelle. That's the whole thing. All right. <laughs> so on that note, we do want to let you know that we have the results from another Yay. poll we did recently. So that was for episode 27 before, which was dinner or supper. What's the difference? That was a fun one. Um, Lindsay, what was the poll question okay. that day? So we were talking about, we talked about breakfast for dinner. We talked about dinner or supper. What do you say? All of these topics around eating. And so our question was, do you eat dessert every day? Um, and what was the answer? What was the <laughs> final result of our audience? What percentage? Well, yeah. I was kind of surprised about this. Um, yeah, I was yes. Too was 27% and no was 73%. I was surprised. I thought that there would be more yeses. What do you think? Yeah, I kind of did. I wonder if we if we zo zoomed in on countries, if this would mm -hmm. be heavier in the US. Yes, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still bombarded <laughs> with messages of dessert and sweets and you know, things like that in the States for sure. Yeah. I, 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 and I do wonder like, okay, what does someone count as dessert? Like if you right. just have a little cookie with lunch, like sometimes I'll just have, you know, a tiny little cookie with lunch or a little <laughs> yeah, something. Um, and it doesn't qualify as dessert does that, for you? Does that count as dessert? Right. Like what is dessert? Good question. So Lindsay, right. do or you is eat it is it yeah. dessert after lunch or dessert after dinner, right? That, so there's some nuances here, Michelle. Right. Do I eat dessert are. every day? No. No, I would be yeah. in that no category. I don't let myself. I wish I, if I only had like a year to live, I definitely would be eating dessert every <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I wouldn't say I eat it every day. No, I don't say I think I eat it every day either. I try, I try not to. Um, it's hard though, because, you know, I have my kids and then, yeah. oh, the, I, like yesterday, 
oh, the ice cream truck is here. Oh, Oh, the ice cream, mom, mom, mom. And then I wasn't going to let him. And then his friend was there with ice cream. And it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, you got to just do it. I let him enjoy. But so then I end up having a bite or, you know, so I feel like I end up eating more just because of my kids. (laughs) Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. So anyway, guys, we're not going to let you know the poll question of today until close to the end of the episode. So definitely keep listening because we have one for today. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. So good. And so there was a past episode that we did, Michelle, that our listeners should definitely check out. Check it out because it's related to today, today's episode. Yeah, Yeah, guys, just a few episodes ago, episode 2094 was what's so funny, how how to connect over laughter in English. So perfect Mm. for today. I love that. I love that. Yeah, laughter is so important for connection. And it also is important to know culture to have that laughter. Like most of the material that comedians work with tends to be cultural, right? Cultural Usually. observations. Cultural I, observation. I think I think the best things are when it's a cultural observation that so many people can relate to and yeah. you don't you don't think about it in your normal <laughs> life and then when you somebody points it out it's just funny yeah. because we kind of especially if it's a very shared thing yeah like this morning my partner sent me a instagram clip and there's so much comedy on instagram too on oh, the social yes. media stuff yes and it was about you know when you have a dog and you have to leave the house a certain personality type which is me and it's like going <sighs> off forever saying goodbye to the dog I'll be back in just, I'll be back in 10 minutes. I promise I won't be gone long. And then we'll go get a pup cup or something like talking to your dog. Like they're an actual person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Cause that relates to you. And so it's extra funny for me. I just, um, had also something that I saw online and it was about, um, giving your kids a snack. So it was like this mom was at the fridge and they said to their kid, like, you don't, you couldn't even see the kid or hear the kid, but they're saying like, Oh, do you want a snack? Oh, so you want cheese? Yeah. Okay. Do you want string cheese or circle cheese? Do you want me to, do you want to open it? Or do you want me to open it? Should I open it halfway or should I open it the whole way? Do you want it? And I'm basically I repeating the entire thing, but we do, we do a string cheese or circle cheese. And so that related to me so much. So I sent it to Dan. It was so funny. So it's all about these observations that are true to your daily life that you don't think you don't realize are so ridiculous and then when somebody points it out you're like oh my god you do that too or ridiculous yeah exactly it just makes you feel a little more connected to humanity a little more normal because at least one other person in the world does that the comedian (laughs) or has seen that among other people so anyway that's why we love Seinfeld and that's why we want you guys to really understand and there's another reason why it's important to talk about Seinfeld today is that you're going to hear these references coming up all the time yes so it's all like required reading here. (laughs) It's true. If you hear these, um, you'll know what they mean. And these also really, I chose these because I felt that they had a cultural aspect to them. Mm. And I felt that they were, they had something in common. It says something about the culture. Um, uh, So I think uh, we're going to learn from Seinfeld today as well. So should we get into it? Yeah, we got so I'm, excited. I'm really excited. So are we doing three cultural, We're do three. three episodes, three kind of gaffes, I guess, is sort of what you would say that, that I guess, they make fun yeah, of Yeah, you could call it a gaffe. Yeah, yeah, you could call it a gaffe. So Lindsay, what's the first one? All right. Well, you've actually, I think, seen all these episodes. I've just kind of heard about them. But mm-hmm. the first one is The Double Dipper. <laughs> yeah, The Double Dipper. Yes. So... Um, Lindsay, what do you know what double dipping is? Of course, right? Mm-hmm. Even if you haven't seen this episode where George double dipped a chip into dip, you know, you've probably heard no double dipping, right? Mm-hmm. If you live in the U.S. or if you've traveled to the U.S., often when you bring out uh, chips and like guac or any kind of dip any or crackers, anything you're going into with a group, someone might say no double dipping and you definitely shouldn't double dip. It's rude. So don't what do it. Mean? What is double dipping? It means you dip one time, you eat half the chip, and then you dip that same chip or that same cracker in. It means your saliva is going into what everyone else is eating to be very mm. uh, blatant. <laughs> <laughs> so it's rude. Yeah. So we don't do it. Yeah. Right. So um, I don't know if the expression double dip started on Seinfeld or not. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so, but um, but I think it became even more popular because of this very special scene where George double dipped a chip, and he basically 
this guy saw him and he just started screaming at him <laughs> and explaining why it was disgusting and it was it was very funny so i feel like that got used more pro probably because of the show so um yeah. yeah if i see someone double dip it does gross me out i have seen it and um yeah 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 you have to pay attention sometimes i wonder if i accidentally double dip if i'm not paying attention i don't think yeah. i do but sometimes i'm like oh my gosh am i double dipping i become <laughs> self-aware all of a sudden <laughs> well um i yeah, I think it's different. Uh, it depends where you are. You know, if it's just me and yeah, Dan or, you know, course. somebody. Yeah. yeah, like then it doesn't matter. But at a party, you definitely want to be yeah, aware absolutely. of it. And then, you know, you just hope that. I, well, I wanted to comment on this one because this one reminded me so much about the pandemic. And this is a yes. commentary on culture. Like, I mean, on more, more so on hygiene than anything. Um, And that yeah. like how we became so obsessed with this stuff especially since the pandemic um so i think that people are more aware of it but i also think that we're starting to forget a little bit do you feel that yeah i think double dipping is something that is going to live on past the pandemic i think it, it became more pronounced and more of a hot button issue in the pandemic but i think it always was rude to double dip and will yeah. continue to be rude although i agree with you at home with your partner your family whatever you're all sharing yeah. germs anyways it's fine <laughs> right um, right but at, at anywhere other than that if you have one neighbor over you definitely want to leave that just right yeah leave that behind um, so the important takeaway, number one, is culturally don't double dip. Number two, check out the episode and then understand when someone says no double dipping or right. go out for double dipping. Oh, I saw Michelle double, double dipping over there. They might be making a joke or something. Yeah. But yeah, it's going to come up in the culture. Yes. I was at the playground the other day and my daughter just was had <laughs> was stole my iced tea and okay. she had the, she was holding it with the straw and then just like some little kid just at the park just came over and took a sip. <laughs> that's hilarious. And I was I like, oh, okay, that's the end of that. Um that's but funny. so <laughs> yeah. So basically, so you might say something like, Don't double dip. I still want to have a bite of that ice cream. Take some mm -hmm. and put it in your own bowl. Yes. Nice. And, you know, I like to lead with assuming people know this, although, of course, yes, when you're talking I know, that's to a thing. kid, you got to teach them. But I want to assume everyone knows this. I assume that, too. <laughs> I don't think that that's like a, a specific U.S. culture thing. I think it's a, a universal hygiene thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so now the next one, Michelle, is my absolute favorite. And it's probably the one that's penetrated the culture the most. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? It's a good one. Well, is it the one that I've highlighted or yes. the one below? Okay, the one yeah. that I've highlighted. Okay, close talker. It's <laughs> great. This is yeah. great. Yeah. Tell us so about Lindsay, this episode. Oh, okay. I'll tell you about it. Um, well, I believe that this was when um, Elaine, I think it was her boyfriend, and but he just would get so close to someone's face when he was speaking that it was like startling. And he was a really <laughs> nice guy. And I think there was one, if I'm not mistaken, there was no, this one picture. scene where, where he's with like um, Jerry's... Jerry. <laughs> talking to to Jerry's parents and he's just like really a nice guy but he just is right up in your face and so right. he's a close talker yeah he's like a blonde guy with kind of curly wavy blonde hair I can picture the scene I can picture yeah the scene. Yeah. yeah 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 so yep. close talker so that is so funny from the episode so, it's so uh, funny yeah, it's speaking in someone's personal space. And I think that people do use it. Um, do you think what do you think about this uh, personal space? Uh, what mm. does it say about culture? Things like that? Well, we've talked about this on the show before, right? This is one that will mm -hmm. probably not kind of permeate across the world as much. And it might not be as funny, actually, this one. And by the way, guys, just go to YouTube and type in close talk. Right. Yeah. Dipper. If you want to see, I'm sure you'll be able yeah. to find. Oh, yeah. You'll be clips. able to pull up those clips for sure. Maybe not the whole episode, but at least the clip. No. And see if you find this one funny. I think we find this funny because it's so socially awkward to yeah. to it, to penetrate someone's bubble. And but it really is a very American thing, right? Yeah, um, yeah. In other countries, we know people do t talk a lot more close. Even yeah. I, oh, you know what I noticed this the other day. Oh, I was babysitting for my niece, and we were watching mm -hmm. like a teenage show that was filmed in Australia. And all the actors were Australian. And I was like, what's weird about this show? There's something weird about the way they're interacting. And I realized they're speaking very close to each other. Like they're standing Aww. right in right. And I was thinking, oh, my Aww. gosh, that is really interesting. 
That so, is interesting that you like picked up on something yeah. that felt weird to you and that's what it was. Yeah. And so I think it's even like not even just the English speaking world. I think it's just the American world and maybe Canada too. Uh, what do you think, Michelle? I don't know. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm trying to think of travel experiences that I've had. And if I've specifically noticed this, and I wish I had paid more attention. Um, oh. But I don't really, I, nothing stands out just at, at this very moment. Oh, but definitely, oh, yes. oh, really, you've had? Oh, yeah. There are times when I taught English in New York. Um, this is back in like 20, 2007 actually. Um, I remember I had a student from Spain and she would come up to me and she would be really, really close. And I would find, I would be with my back to the board. And by the mm -hmm. time we were, I would start moving back as she was, <laughs> she would move closer. And by the time I, we finished the conversation, I was like against the board. My shoulders. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because it just oh. felt so uncomfortable. I just needed that space. Yeah. yeah, that's that is yeah. interesting. Yeah, so guys, I mean, so you've seen, you so you've had experience with that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it can make you feel funny when someone is in your personal space in your personal bubble. Um, but you might hear in a, in a conversation like this. Um, sorry, I don't mean to be a close talker. There's just not that much room here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is fun. So just go check it out. See if you guys think that's funny. If not, then it might be that we're weird. You know, we're <laughs> weird in the sense yeah. that we need that space. I mean, we've talked about this. I mentioned at the airport um, when I was in Egypt too. People were just kind of really up in there. A lot of, kind of <laughs> bumping and no. I, I yeah. think that we oh we you know yeah. Americans kind of settled in the countryside where there's lots of space and we build this expectation mm. that we can have that space but it's not a reality all over the yeah. world no yeah. no no um yeah. so let's do one more so the last one is low talker mm. okay this one i haven't seen oh so. <laughs> so this was i believe uh uh i think it was jerry no 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 Maybe Kramer. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was dating this woman and she spoke in a very quiet voice. And instead of acting, asking her to speak louder, they would just kind of like nod along. And then, <laughs> Lindsay, have you seen, do you remember where Jerry wears the puffy shirt? No, that was oh, like, like, it's like a pirate. Oh, okay. okay. So she ends up asking Jerry to wear a shirt that she designed, I believe, or she had something to do with. Um, on a talk show and he just says oh, oh yeah yeah because he can't hear <laughs> and then he gets stuck wearing this shirt and it's very oh embarrassing he's upset and so um they you know, would say that she is a low talker now let's just say uh, these things are all kind of insults you know like Seinfeld is a little bit of a mean-spirited show so it's not something where you want to go around and say hey you're a low talker you know you you're a close the, talker yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I just want to point that out because Seinfeld is not one of the things they say make Seinfeld is special or that the Edgy. show even says is that there's nothing to learn from the show as far as like your morals there's no lesson I've yes. heard that said about Seinfeld well, so we, it's we, not we these are the show yeah, uh, the, yeah. the characters are aren't really admirable in any way. No, it's just not. funny. So don't yeah. go around saying these directly to someone, but yes. you know, you can use it in certain ways. That's a good point. I think we've mentioned that on the show too. It's kind of refreshing in the sense that like up until Seinfeld, there always needed to be a lesson. It was like a moral yeah. thing, these TV shows. Yeah, yeah. Sitcoms, but now Seinfeld just said, hey, we think some things are funny. We're going to make fun of some things and it's going to be refreshing. And it, it is. Um, but right. yeah, low talker. So what, why is this, why does this not work at least in American culture, Michelle? I think, I mean, yeah, I think especially in our culture, we really value like, <laughs> you know, speaking up, being loud and whether that's a good thing or not. Um, right. People, you know, we, people get the attention if they're loud. What do you think? Yeah. And it's, this is what we get a bad rap for when we go abroad. And I, I'm always hyper aware mm -hmm. to not be mm -hmm. that loud American mm -hmm. talker when I, I speaker when I'm in like a cafe in Paris, for example. Right. Yeah. That's when I want to really be culturally aware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we do have a better reputation. So it doesn't translate abroad very well. But in the U.S., mm -hmm. I think it is important important in many contexts to project your voice, know where you are, know, like just read the room. But yeah, yeah I think we we're a culture that really values verbal expression. Definitely. All right, Michelle, this is great. Where do we use these? What should we do next? 
All right. So again, you don't have to be a Seinfeld expert um, because I think these have seeped into everyday language, like I said. Um, that's what's incredible about references and why you should always be paying attention to them and yeah. consuming lots of media content. So TV right. shows, movies, music, etc. But there are some things from shows that are playful, more teasing, and yeah. all of these, you, you got to have a playful undertone. You got to be careful about insulting yes. anyone. Oh my gosh. Totally. I love it. I love it. So are we ready for our key poll now, Michelle? I'm excited. Yes. So the key poll is, do you watch Seinfeld? <laughs> yes or no? I'm okay. curious. Do we yeah. have any Seinfeld fans? This is a good one because we know a lot of you guys watch Friends, but mm -hmm. we're a little curious about yeah. What do you know about Seinfeld? Because I think it's just as popular here in the U.S. as Friends is. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to know. So do you watch Seinfeld? Yes or no? Good stuff. Whoa, this is a long episode, Lindsay. Should we go on or should we yeah, cut it off? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's, uh, let's actually, I think that's probably good for today. You okay. Know, our, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another time we'll do some role plays, yeah, but maybe yeah. We'll have a we, part two or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we definitely will because there's so much here. Um, but yeah, like we said, the takeaway is you got to be careful with these because they are uh, much more playful, and, but could be insulting. Um, but you will hear them and you can use them in a playful way within the right situation. Yeah. I, the most important takeaway I think is like we said, go watch these clips, yes. you know, see how you feel when you watch them. How does it resonate with you? Have you had any experiences on either side of the gaff? Right. Um, and that's a key word for today, right? Gaff. Yeah, yes. Put that gaff, in. Kind of a social mistake. That is a good one. All right, Michelle, we are off the mic for today and we'll pick up this topic another day. All right. Definitely. All right. This was fun, guys. And enjoy Seinfeld. Yep. Go to that key poll and put, you know, make that's your right. voice heard. <laughs> All right. All bye, right. guys. Bye.